Welcome to Dot Headlines, I'm Mary Lee, thank you for joining us. In today's top stories, to safeguard the health of local residents, Vietnam City volunteers hold a free clinic in Tainan Province. We take a look at the connection between Taiwan's rise in unemployment rate and a shortage in manual labor forces. And we follow China City volunteers to Hebei Province as they carry out home visitations to scholarship recipients. We start today's program in Malaysia's Batu Pahat. Two households were left in ashes following a fire which started from the improper burning of trash. Hearing the news, city volunteers rushed to the site to offer the affected families loving care. The timely aid and emergency cash provided much relief in this chaotic time. Smoke still rises from the ruins of this house that was set ablaze as a result of careless burning of garbage. The fire spread from trash to cars to homes, leaving a trail of devastation in its wake. As residents lost everything to the fire, city volunteers arrived with aid and emergency cash. I want to thank City for its help today. This fire was something that none of us could have predicted. It will be a test of our resolve, but your help has certainly lightened our burden. Thank you so much. Master Chen Yen, it's very, very a lot of thank you very much. Your support of my family. You see, my family is nothing now, so it's very thank you very much. Their home's gone, but these families still have many blessings in the form of hope, resolve and assistance from Tsuji. In Vietnam, Tsuji volunteers travel to Godao County in Tainan Province to hold a free clinic at the recommendation of the local Red Cross. Many people here continue to suffer from Agent Orange, a toxic defoliant used during the Vietnam War which can kill, maim and cause birth defects. In the future, volunteers plan to hold regular free clinics here to safeguard this isolated farming community. Vietnam's city volunteers are holding a free clinic inside an elementary school in Godao County. 186 volunteers left Ho Chi Minh City at 5 in the morning to drive two and a half hours to the clinic. And though it rained, the free clinic continued as scheduled, for it was something that the residents have been looking forward to. Godao is located in Tainin Province. It is about 99 kilometers west of Ho Chi Minh City, just next to the Cambodia border. Economy is poor in this farming community. The young have left for jobs in the industrial parks, leaving behind the old and frail, who are mostly victims of Asian Orange from the Vietnam War. Many can hardly walk due to their deformed limbs. At the suggestion of the local Red Cross, Tsuji International Medical Association is here to hold a free clinic. With a full array of medical equipment and services provided by volunteers, Tsuji aims to deliver first-class medical service to people in need. Tsuji has prepared adequate equipment for the free clinic. There are wide varieties of medical departments here. The crowd is also being processed smoothly. The number of people served exceeded the expected 700. Residents came worried but left at ease. Besides getting her cancer examined, a resident also utilized the free haircut service. I'm waiting to get a haircut. There are supplies and free haircuts here. I don't have money for a haircut. Tsuji has also prepared daily supplies for residents. As volunteers respectfully escort their residents out the door, they exchange heartfelt smiles. Every time I participate, I feel that Tsuji is becoming more and more professional. Through our collaboration, we have built up trust. I'm quite touched. I will surely participate the next time. I look forward to giving myself more often. Inspired by the universal love, more people promise they will participate at the next Tsuji event. Two months ago, Xiamen Tsuji Care recipient Yang Xiaodong arrived in Taiwan to receive joint reconstruction and replacement surgery. Thanks to the first surgery, Yang is now able to stand with the help of a walker. Recently, Yang underwent his second surgery, and it is hoped that when he recovers, he will be able to sleep flat on his back. Okay, I'll Adjusting the position of the surgical table is Chen Yinghe, who is the honorary superintendent at the Hualien Tsuji Hospital. If this is heavier, it will reduce the physical burden he feels. We are using this for safety purposes. Prior to the surgery, Chen Yinghe and his team of medical staff took more than two hours to adjust the operation table. 
支撑你的胸部。OK， 好，安奈赫。As Yang Xiaodong suffers from severe scoliosis to alleviate the pain, doctors have to remove some parts of his lumbar vertebrae and insert a stent. However, the complicated nature of the surgery has increased its risk. The possible problems that may occur during the surgery are excessive bleeding and nerve damage. His great vessels will be severely damaged if we accidentally pull his aortic and inferior vena cava. Facing these dangers, Yang Xiaodong is not afraid because he knows after this surgery, he will be able to finally sleep flat on his back, something he has been looking forward to for years. We estimate that he needs to go through two surgeries. Today is the first surgery and we cut through his fourth lumbar vertebrae. Right now his spine is about 40 to 42 degrees better than before as we expected. With the surgery ending on a successful note, medical staff at the Hualien Zijie Hospital promised to be by Yang Xiaodong's side for his next surgery and the rehab that follows. In Taiwan, to safeguard the health of Sanmin District Recycling Volunteers, Kaohsiung team of doctors and volunteers recently held a free health check at Dingjing Elementary School. This time, the health check was joined by Shi Yiting, who recently received her medical technician certificate. Checking blood sugar level, offering ultrasound and other medical services. Today, Kaohsiung team of doctors are here at Dingjing Elementary School to safeguard the health of Sanming District Recycling Volunteers. I am very grateful to Master Chen Yan because the free health check offers services from many departments. I received checkups from my eyes and teeth. The free health clinic didn't take a lot of time and was very convenient. The de sisters were there for us too. The attentiveness and gestures of the Tima doctors have touched the hearts of many recycling volunteers. Tima volunteer Shi Yiting, who recently received her medical technician certificate, sees the opportunity to offer her expertise. Right now I am not working because I am still in training. I am very happy to have this opportunity to learn from the doctors and help people. Patients are our teachers because we can learn valuable lessons from them. With love, the relationship between doctors and patients are like family. Now with their health safeguarded, these recycling volunteers will continue their mission to protect our Mother Earth. For the past couple of years, Taiwan has faced an insufficiency in its labor force. Statistics provided by Taiwan's Executive Yuan show a labor shortage of about 230,000 people. On the other end, Taiwan's unemployment rate is on the rise, with 13% of youth currently without jobs. What is the underlying problem between these two extremes? Let's find out in our next report. At this car repair shop, service technicians are busy with no time for rest. For an apprentice, a monthly salary is around 333 US dollars. Once a master, they can earn between 1,164 to 1,996 US dollars each month. However, with an average of 10 vehicles needing service each day, not only is there not enough manpower, it is also difficult to recruit new staff. Apprentices are not easy to find. Nowadays, parents are overprotective of their children, and they think a job like ours doesn't guarantee a future. Youths nowadays are less than interested in this type of labor-intensive job. Even air conditioning repairmen, vehicle service technicians, electricians and so on face a similar dilemma. In the first half of last year, public sector industries organized over 10 large-scale recruitment events all across Taiwan. Surprisingly, the actual turnout was much less than anticipated. At the Taichung event, one firm expected 6,000 applicants, yet received only half of that. This does not signify an economic recovery, but rather a labor shortage. An analysis shows that the work fields which involve technical skills, operational work or service work all face a shortage of labor. 
with jobs difficult to find, is it really because one's goals is more than one can achieve? Data provided by the government indicates that Taiwan's unemployment rate has been on the rise and one out of every 10 youths is now without a job, a ratio which far exceeds neighboring countries such as Japan and South Korea. Approximately 20% of young people stay unemployed for as long as 53 weeks, for some even longer. Unable to find a job over a prolonged period, they start to get despondent and feel discouraged about their future. Labor shortage and unemployment now stand at two extremes. 60% of those employed between 25 and 29 years old are from higher education institutions. Meanwhile, the labor market is dominated by manual labor. Looking at a comparison of the two diagrams, the reason for the labor shortage becomes apparent. Many people aspire to become a white-collar professional, yet there is a huge inconsistency between what the market demands versus the expectations of job seekers. With the labor market multidimensional, do you know what it is you want? The pay is my first consideration, of course. Many jobs require taking shifts, which is more tiring. There will be aspects which they will insist on and some which are non-negotiable, and that usually is their leisure time. So their second request would be not to work overtime or shifts. In this case, salary won't be their first priority. Whether it is low-skilled or labor-intensive jobs, None of it seems to meet the expectations of this younger generation. With a shortage of manual labor, using foreign labors is not a long-term solution. Perhaps only with tailored strategies can we speed up the country's recruitment rate. In China, the Suzhou City Grounds organized a humanitarian camp, inviting 124 entrepreneurs from 13 different regions to join. During the class on tea ceremony and flower arrangement, the entrepreneurs gained a better understanding of Suzhou's humanistic spirit. At China's Suzhou City Grounds, a cup of Jingsi tea illuminates the participants' humanistic spirit. This is the Tsuji's humanitarian camp arranged for entrepreneurs who are here to temporarily leave behind their business life and contemplate the meaning of life. He didn't bother to maintain his six cars. That way he could save a lot of money and felt much lighter as well. When you possess things, worries also come along. In total, 124 entrepreneurs from 13 different regions joined this two-day event which is helping them cleanse their hearts. Here, they can leave profit and gain behind and focus on the pursuit of happiness and devotion. When I saw Tsuji volunteers walk into the venue holding lamps up the heart, I was immensely moved. Master Zhen Yin leads the Tsuji brothers and sisters to spread great love far and wide. Tsuji makes us realize there is truly love in this world. At the Quenshan Environmental Education Headquarters, the entrepreneurs learn how to practice recycling and to make cleaning agents out of kitchen refuse. Here I vow, from now on, I will adopt vegetarianism to cultivate my heart and soul. I vow to be Master Zheng Yan's eyes and hands in Shenyang. From now on, I will start helping out with minor things. I'm thankful that I have the ability to do so. Bowing to carry on Tsuji's missions, these entrepreneurs are ambassadors, spreading Tsuji's great love far and wide. Starting July 6th, Malaysia's Tsuchings, together with Tsuching alumni and other volunteers, are putting on a sign language musical tour of the Sutra of Profound Gratitude to Parents. As the date of the first curtain call is coming up, participants seize every opportunity to practice. All hope to use these performances to inspire the public to fulfill their filial duties. <laughs> Here in Penang, Malaysia, every rehearsal is treated like an actual performance. Memorizing each step and movement, these teachings are grasping every opportunity to practice, and the wisdom gained is thus incorporated into real life. I am often angry towards my mother, but after participating in the Sutra musical, I understand that my mother actually loves me very much. I will try to change and not lose my temper towards her.
Putting on a performance of profound gratitude to parents, as the on-stage volunteers are not professionals, we listen carefully to Director Wu Fengshen's guidance. Seeing his father going in and out of the hospital has made Wu realize filial piety cannot wait. My mother once asked me why I'm always not at home. I told her that I'm doing this for Buddha, for the well-being of people. Actually, I'm garnering blessings for my mother, for my father. The sign language musical leads the audience in gaining wisdom and also a visual feast of the performance. In China, Suji volunteers in Hebei province have periodically subsidized needy students of Lai Yuan First Middle School. Recently, they visited scholarship recipients' homes to learn about their family conditions, while at the same time brought emotional support to the students' families. Talking about fulfilling filial duties, Mrs. Liu feels nothing but only proud of her two boys. One of them would hold a glass of water and the other would help their grandmother open her mouth trying to feed her medicine. Mrs. Liu's mother-in-law suffers spinal cerebellar atrophy and is unable to take care of herself. Thankfully, Liu has two thoughtful kids to help her with household chores. <laughs> Visiting scholarship recipients' families, Hebei Ziji volunteers can better understand students' family conditions. <laughs> Thank you so much for caring for my son. This is scholar recipient Liu Jiangman's home. After her father passed away, her brother became the sole breadwinner who did odd jobs to pay off the family's debt. My daughter says to me all the time that she wants to go to college. She also says if her brother cannot pay off the debt, she will be responsible for it. However, this family cannot afford Liu's tuition for college. At school, Liu is known as a sensitive and mature student. There's no dress rehearsal in life. Every day is a live broadcast. I hope for happiness, cherishing families and friends around me, and cherishing the blessings I own. Despite living in poverty, scholarship recipients encourage each other to continue in seeking higher education. Since the beginning of 2013, every Friday, U.S. City volunteers head over to Lincoln Elementary in Santa Ana, California to provide a happy campus backpack for the impoverished students of the school, which contains food for the children to eat over the weekend. This program was widely supported by teacher Elaine Villaverde, and she even recruited many students to assist in the packaging of the backpacks each week. As the end of the year is coming up for these students, City volunteers organized a closing ceremony. Volunteers showed a film of the times everyone spent together in the past half year and brought smiles as well as tears to each student's face. The school year is coming to an end soon here in Santa Ana, California. Lincoln Elementary School's Happy Campus volunteers have invited Siji volunteers to rehearse the Siji song in sign language. The memories from 2013 are unforgettable in each young volunteer's mind. Helping people makes me feel good about myself. It makes me feel like I'm a good person. No one could imagine that working hand in hand with city volunteers once a week for the past five months could leave behind so many fond memories. Seeing all the moments, teacher Elaine Villaverde is very proud of her young volunteers. As it's about time to say goodbye, emotions can't help but rise to the top.
In the past, these backpacks held food for the impoverished students to eat during the weekend. However, today, these backpacks hold seeds of compassion, filled with city volunteers' love and hope for the children to carry with them wherever they go. Recently, a 10th anniversary celebration event and a graduation ceremony were held at the City Academy in Surrey, British Columbia. Among the 14 graduates was Chong Zhongxiang, who never missed a class in the past 10 years. Putting on a final flourish on the ceremony, students also offered tea to their teachers to express their thanks. With blessings from their principal, students are ready to begin a new chapter in their lives. This year, 14 students from the Tsuji Academy in Surrey, BC will be graduating. On stage, their teacher Xiao Li Ming expresses her love and care for each student. Over the years, Xiao has treated each student like her own child, sincerely offering a cup of tea to their teachers. Here at the Tsuji Academy, students have not only learned Chinese, but also Tsuji's humanistic spirit. Among the graduates is Tong Zhongxiang, who enrolled in 2003 and never missed a class in 10 years. With blessings from their teachers and principal, these students are ready to start a new chapter in their lives. And in the years to come, the Tsuji Academy will continue to pass on knowledge and nurture goodness in its students. 80-year-old Grandpa Zhong is a solitary senior living in Taiwan's Jiayi. He has longed to return to his derelict home after undergoing surgery five months ago. To make his dream come true, local city volunteers came together and made the senior's home livable again. A fallen lufa trellis and overgrown weeds cover up a trail that leads to a container hidden in the back. This is where 80-year-old Grandpa Zhong calls home. Five months ago, the senior underwent surgery for his heart condition and was subsequently placed in a hospice by social workers to ensure Grandpa Zong can fully recover. However, the homesick senior has not been able to sleep well for the past four months. Thus, city volunteers decided to help. What will we do if we are as old as him and caught in the same predicament? Or what if he is our relative? Will we just let him live in an environment such as this? I think that would be truly difficult to bear. The thorough cleanup returned smiles to Grandpa Zong's face, and Tsuji's act of kindness also moved the mini digger operator to donate his earnings. Thanks to one charity, now more seeds of love have been planted. At the end of our show, we turn our camera to Taichung, Taiwan, where Tsuji volunteers' regular visits to senior homes bring much love and care to residents. One volunteer said, through participating in Tsuji's events and adapting a vegetarian diet, his health has returned and his spirit has been cleansed. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Da Headlines. Goodbye.